Oh, that's good. Have you ever clapped, Paul? No. Like ever? But uh, but, I could I could have this time, but that was way too entertaining to watch. So how many times will how many times will Nick hurt himself just to like get the loudest clap? I'll um I'll actually sync it to the scream that you make after the clap and the actual clap. Clap. Ah! That'll do it. That's a good one. Hey, welcome to episode 153 of Front Seat Gamer. I'm Nick. I'm here with Paul. Hey. And Blake. Hey, Nick. How's it going, guys? Pretty good. Yeah, it's been a good. while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, being almost a month. Almost a month. Because some people have family. Yep. That, uh, yep. Uh, some almost people have family. But yeah. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> no, we're, no, go ahead. Well, Blake, what le- you going to say? No? have family. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, we actually haven't seen proof of your family that's true they're never they're weirdly never here when you guys are around <laughs> i've never seen your family and you in the same room that's true which means i think you are your family well i'm i'm, I'm a member of my family <laughs> if that but are you all members of your family i'm not all members okay well you know no until i have proof of that <laughs> um you guys been playing stuff i have been have you been playing stuff <laughs> very cryptic i have been <laughs> uh not, nothing uh, of particular note yeah. on my end, despite having there being ha, there having been a month. Uh, I haven't played anything of like great interest. Yeah. Do you want to talk about because uh, it's the hot new topic, the hot new game? Do you want to talk about Stray? Oh uh, yeah, we can talk about Stray. As, but before we get to that, though, Paul, have you played any, been playing anything? Uh, I played a few things, mostly phone games though. Yeah, I did try a Switch game, but couldn't get into it. Okay, well, we'll, we'll hear what it. What was it? Uh, it's called like Shin Megami Tensei okay. or something. Yeah. It's some yeah. um, turn-based game. I was looking for turn-based games. Oh. And I tried playing it, and it's just like a shell of a game oh, with no. some turn-based. Now, yeah. why were you looking for turn-based games? Uh, I just wanted something that I could chip away at. Um, I've had problems with uh, tendons in my hands, so mm. I was looking for something that wouldn't require big flicks of my thumb yeah. around. Yeah. I could yeah. just that mess about sense. with. Uh, have you tried um, uh, uh, Fire Emblem? No, I did see that pop up. That is turn-based. It's a turn-based tactics game. Yeah, uh, with a lot of RPG stuff. Yeah, that sounds like uh, kind of what I was looking for. This—that's what this was supposed to be. And right. to be fair, it was. It just had none of the rest of the game. <laughs> you just walk Paul, around. Did you download a demo? <laughs> <laughs> did you did you download a video of a game? <laughs> I kind of felt like a trailer. It. We all you get to do is the like combat, and then you <laughs> run around. It was so weird. Okay, I'm in, I'm kind of intrigued by the description of this game, in that you said there's no game outside of the combat. There really isn't. Um, they try and do some story, but the story feels. I think it's because I've never played any of this part, uh, any of this series before, and I'm starting with number five. Oh, so it just uh-huh. jams you in the middle of this story that doesn't seem to make any kind of sense. <laughs> oh no! Um, there's like two worlds you go between. One of them is a map that you run around with what looks like a pin hmm. on the map, and you okay. can just talk to things. Yeah. Hmm. There's dialogue options everywhere that mean nothing. Okay. And then you go back to the other part of the world, and there's just monsters, r- and you run into them, and you battle them and you can like capture them oh okay okay it was like pokemon without any of the without, rest without the world of it. building i guess yeah. there is world building it just doesn't doesn't have any consequence to it it's just empty yeah interesting I'll maybe it gets it better cause... maybe you need like 40 hours or something but i played like you, eight you just probably. need to play the first four and then you'll get it yeah i think that's, I think that's what you're missing <laughs> the first four games yeah um, I've heard Persona. That's a ter- turn-based game. Right? Yeah, actually, I've heard Persona's really good. That's a I really think good that um, the same like franchise or something. Really, Persona and Shin Megami Tensei are the same thing. Uh, or they're I don't believe related. they're re- maybe the same publisher or uh, something. Maybe, but like that's, Persona that's is cool. very like specific in that type of game. It is. Yeah, uh, but I've heard only good things about Persona. Mm. Uh, and I've heard bits of the soundtrack, and I like the soundtrack. So that's pretty cool. 
I've I've never played Persona, but I've watched uh, dozens of hours of the Giant Bomb crew uh, playing that. Just, just watch them playing. Yes, it? just watching them playing. Why? Years ago, like they did a endurance run where they just played through the entire game. And which one? Persona Four. Okay. Yeah. They're up to six now, I think. Are they? I think so. Definitely at least five. Like, yeah, I know five came out. I thought it was six. I feel like I've seen like six different editions of five pop up. That's probably true. Because I think there's multiple <laughs> editions of each. Like, right. <laughs> each one. Mm. Uh, so, Stray. Stray came out. For those who don't know, Stray is a game where you play as a cat. And you're in like a... It's not exactly post-apocalyptic. It's like more like a uh, cyberpunk future. Yeah, but everyone's a robot. Everyone's a robot. No yeah. humans. Mm, I think it's somewhat it post-apocalyptic. There was yeah. or, very abandoned and mm. yeah, other than the robot people. Certainly, certainly post-human. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's like a sort of puzzle platforming game, right? Yep. Yeah. That sounds right. So what do you what do you think about that, Blake? <laughs> <laughs> so, well you brought it up <laughs> well that's true i did but uh, it sounded like when we were talking about it earlier you had a lot to say about it and well, uh I, I i was just i was just saying because um it is the new hot game out now like i just see on my social media yeah like videos of people playing it with their own real life cats watching it okay um and the- so it's 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 real prevalent all over social media yes but i've i've not played it but i was wanting to to see if you guys and the listeners think that I should get it. Right. Well, the thing I I've observed. So when when you see gameplay or when you watch the trailers, that game looks like it's awesome. Mm. You're it looks like you're this cat, you you get the like fluid cat platforming. Yeah. It looks like real slick. You're meowing. You get there's a meow button. You get to meow. <laughs> uh there's all the cat behavior buttons. You can rub up on people's legs. Yep. You can scratch doors. You can, you can knock rip up a shelves. rip up a couch. Rip up a couch. I've, I've seen that. Um uh, but the thing that really appealed to me was like that that smooth cat pat platforming. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I started watching actual gameplay and the scenario is basically um like it's all context based platforming. Mm-hmm. So you go to the edge of a of a platform and if there's something you can jump to it'll give you a prompt oh i see and it'll automatically jump to that destination i see so, so just no finding actual the prompt. platform it's finding the prompt exactly uh, yeah and that and doing the right ones at the right time right. yeah and that really lowered my yep. uh interest in you you wanted to be a cat and see a wall and be like now i have to figure my way up there using my cat abilities well my cat just, jumping abilities yeah i just want to yeah. take advantage of the fact that it's like a a a live cat yeah. that I can jump around, like do cat stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. And uh, and and that I have you know actual control over it. And it's like a platforming mm, game as opposed mm. to a sort of a context based puzzle mm. game, which is really what it is. It's 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 not it's not true platforming. It's like mm-hmm. uh, puzzle platforming, mm. which is very different. Mm. I think it's. Okay. I also feel like it's really just a vehicle to tell a story. Yeah. where you're a part of the story. I haven't actually played it, but I watched a bunch of Stacy playing it. Uh-huh. She loves it. Like, loves, loves it. Yeah. Like, she, in the he, first he, five minutes of the game, she was, like, squealing and shaking her <laughs> controller up and down, up and down, because she knocked a can of paint off the edge of a thing. Yeah. The, it, there's, it, looks, <laughs> it does look fun. That's the thing. Like, I, I've, I've got mixed feelings. It's, it's, it looks like a really compelling world. I love the, mm. the look of the game. Yeah. I love the premise a lot uh it's just the the fantasy of being a cat and jumping around and doing cat stuff yeah <laughs> uh i think is uh a little bit to me it's a little bit of a lie because it's all go to the edge press the button as yeah opposed to bounce wherever you want whenever you want i think it just targets a very specific niche yeah it's, it's a it's... story driven sort of puzzle game yeah really, which is totally cool um but i i didn't start out wanting to play it right. i'd watch the trailer of it yeah and i was like i'll just watch stacy play some of it yeah it didn't quite i just didn't think i was gonna enjoy it even if it was a full-on puzzle platformer where yeah. you're a cat and now that you've watched stacy playing it i won't play it but i'll watch her play more <laughs> right you're um, enjoying the story yeah. you just don't you don't care to actually sit down and... yeah i don't i don't need to be the person that goes up to the legion yeah. presses x yeah yeah exactly <laughs> 
Yeah, that's true. That's a, in some ways, it is a game where you can get much of the experience through just watching. Mm. It is also quite a different thing to see a cat get hurt in a game. Oh. As opposed to just whatever the character you're playing yeah. is. There's like this weird thing where you really don't want the cat to die, right? Mm. Whereas like if it was your main character and it died, it is part of a story. Yeah. Like that's usually part of the main gameplay loop of most games. You die yeah. and mm. retry. Yeah. But there's something about it being a cute cat where you go, No, <laughs> you're not allowed to do that. How, how many lives does the cat have? <laughs> I don't I don't actually know. It's gotta be nine, right? Yeah, it's, hopefully. <laughs> how, how could they miss that? <laughs> uh it oh. kind of touches upon something. I mean, I, I tapped into this exact philosophy for uh uh yes, heist you did. back on, back, mm. back then making the cat uh 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 well spoilers cat dies yeah poor hana at uh early in development mm. that cat was called beans and paul started hiding cans of beans around the office including on my desk and in the fridge and putting my name on them i did do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm also late. though that can of beans in the fridge stayed there for ages too and it just with nick on it <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! That's how polite people are. They're just like, "Oh, Nick's name is Nick's, on it." Nick's oh, beans. <laughs> Nick's <not>. beans. <laughs> but also, who keeps a can of beans? And I don't put a can of beans in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> in the fridge. Maybe you uh, like cold beans. Uh, I don't know who's the judge. Cold. Who's the judge? Gotta Freshly have chilled. Yeah. Uh, I, ice cold beans. Best like, served chilled. <laughs> I like when I open my beans and they slide out as one solid block. Yep. Mm. Uh, so yeah. I think you've touched upon something that is, I think, universally true, which is in some ways we empathize more strongly with our pets, yeah. our pets than uh, with a, a character we're meant to embody, mm. which is interesting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I have a question. Is Stacy a cat person? Yeah. Okay. I, th I have a feeling that this <laughs> plays heavily into people liking this game. So do I, and that's what I meant by it. It had a very specific niche. Yeah. Although it's quite a big niche, to be fair. People <laughs> yeah, that I can't people. Who likes cats? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of the internet. <laughs> um, you going to get it, Blake? I don't know. You guys have kind of convinced me not to. I was really <laughs> on the fence of it, like, because well, it looks really nice. And uh, what, like, do you want, what do you want out of your game? It's like, a, it's a pretty short experience. Yeah. So it, it, in some ways, well, that kind of appeals. Here's the mm. question is, uh, maybe you guys aren't the ones, I don't know why I'm coming to you guys for all my information on this. <laughs> but it's like, how, like, I think, like, how much is it, you know? Like how, if it's like a full price game. Yeah, I don't know. I'm probably going to say no. But if it's not... like 20, 30, it can't be 20 bucks. It's an indie game, I believe. Yeah. It's, uh, published by Annapurna, which is. I feel like it was around 40 to 50. But uh, uh, there was a thing where if you upgrade your PS Plus pr uh, subscription, you can get it for free. Mm. So I think Stacy paid 30 bucks to upgrade her PS Plus and okay. got the game for okay. free. I feel like it's like 40 bucks on Steam. Yeah, that wrong. seems that seems all right. Because if it was like, because you know, it's it, it's like a big uh, PlayStation game, really. Like, well, like, at least I thought it was until I saw it on <laughs> Steam. Um, yeah, I was surprised seeing on seeing it on Steam. I remember it being almost exclusively advertised on. A PlayStation, PlayStation. Right? yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Like when it was first announced, I'm sure it was at the like E3 PlayStation yeah. thing. Um, so yeah, with in with that in mind, I was like, oh, is it going to be like a flagship kind of like hundred plus dollar thing? Yeah, right? but uh, especially because PlayStation games are re PS5 games are at least a hundred and twenty. Yeah, you yeah. pretty much can't get away with anything. Like yeah, so. inflation. Am I right, guys? <laughs> oh, man, thanks, Biden. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. Thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> the uh, uh, so, I mean, I, I you liked uh, Firewatch. Yep, yep. I would probably just from what I know about Stray, kind of put it in a similar vein. I might get it. It's, then. it's, that it's a lot right. more interactive. Yeah, than, okay. than Firewatch. In, but yeah, it, more more emphasis on exploration and mm. puzzle solving. Well, Firewatch was like so much story yeah. driven, and if if Stray is a similar thing. Like are you you're enjoying the story out of it? Yeah. Um yeah. and I haven't even been paying like full attention. But yeah. It's a very charming game. Oh, that's cool. All right. I'm convinced. <laughs> I mean, let me put it this way, Blake. Uh you only buy early access games that are bad. <laughs> so 
<laughs> so this will be a chain. So, it's not early so, access, is it? I don't. I don't know what the argument against it is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> is it unfinished in any way? Uh, can I like build what? a hut? <laughs> <laughs> how much? How many survival uh, mechanics are in it? <laughs> Is there a, how buggy is, is there it? You can meow. Yeah, how, how buggy is how it? How frustrating will it be to play? Because I really, there's a, a minimum level of frustration I need to hit. <laughs> you sell me. I'm in. <laughs> uh, so, Blake, what have you been playing? Um, I've been playing a uh, game called Alaloth, Champions of the Four Kingdoms. Can you spell the first word? No. Yeah, I'm struggling with the Alaloth. 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 Yep. A-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-
I don't know. I just thought that was like a nice like kind of thing. Sure. If, yeah. you, if you talk to one of these characters, how much lore do they? Is it just like one little block per, per, per character? Like, is it the here's my two paragraphs? Yeah. Al 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 is uh he's the demon. They'll they'll for the tell four you, kingdoms. They'll tell you a little bit about like uh what is happening in the area. What what's the gameplay? But also like? that's not <laughs> that's also not even like the actual game. That's yeah, just, what, that's what just you're something... told me so far is they've got the reverse quest marker system. That's just something <laughs> that's just something I like I, appreciated I, I, basically. I, I love that you love it. Yeah, I, I just basically appreciated that. It was um yeah. <laughs> but the actual game is that you go into an area, you grab some quests and you go out and you fight monsters. That's yeah. essentially it. The loop is actually like very, very simple. Yeah. Um, when you're fighting monsters, are we talking like are it's what... it's real time combat? So you're do you're you're dodging and you're blocking and you're parrying. Okay. And you have some abilities. Yeah. Um, that they, they I quite like this kind of thing where they don't have an experience bar, so you're not getting experience points and you're not leveling up through experience. Okay. But what you the way you level up is by finishing these like dungeons. So the, yeah. the world is the, like you, you, the way you travel around the world is like you're presented with a world map and you have a pin very oh, similar no. to what you oh, are. No. Talking about. <laughs> and you go from like, and you look, capture monsters, you, you fight monsters. It was very, very, <laughs> it's very, very similar. And you, um, you have a pin and you, as you move, like you see monsters and NPCs around the world moving as well. Okay. So like, you might start leaving a town and heading to a quest location. Yeah. And you'll see a bunch of those, bunch of like maybe like monsters that you need to kill will have like a little icon on them that like these are some monsters you need to kill so you can chase them down or whatever. Yep. And you'll see like merchants on the roads like moving around. It it it's pretty neat like that. Um, <laughs> it's pretty neat like I, that. I thought yeah, that yeah. was pretty neat. <laughs> sure. Um, I I can picture it. Yeah, but it's, it, it what it actually sounds like is uh uh. Uh, the the mountain blade overworld. It is. It is like the mountain blade overworld. Yeah. Um, it's huge too. It's like I, I think because uh because they're not actually making all the terrain in between these like key locations, they just have this giant as world. Like right. You zoom the map out and it's it's massive. Um, and well, my point about like how to level up is that you go to these uh these like dungeon locations. Yeah. Uh, that you're then like once you go into it, you're kind of locked in. Okay. So you have to either like defeat it or you die. Fail. Yeah. Yep. And once you get once you uh, complete it, then you get uh, talent points and ability points and and stat up and stuff like that. Okay. Interesting. So yeah. it's it's all kind of achievement based. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite cool. Uh, when now you said it was an action RPG. Yeah. So now, are we talking? Uh, ARPG as in like uh, loot driven, yeah. Uh, it's um grindy monster fighty, or are we talking like Zelda style RPG with action? It's it's not like Path of Exile or Diablo where you're just killing dozens and dozens and thousands of monsters and every like everything's a loot pinata. Yeah, like fights feel more real. Like I said, you've got like a dodge and a yeah. block and a. Uh, parry and you eventually unlock abilities and they're on they're on timers that which the abilities are very um action rpg okay um the way you like use them and and that there's there's you know there's things like a ground a leap slam basically right um uh when you unlock these abilities uh do you have control over like your character build is there like a build that you're making o across this it's 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 pretty bare really like compared to like path of exile even maybe Sure. Even maybe I mean, compared, uh, to... compared to Path of Exile, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's off character. Well, you're, you're presented with like three, um, you're presented with three sort of uh, skill trees, yeah, of um, like melee, ranged, and magic. Yeah, yeah, they're they're basic. They're pretty much that, um, you know, and they they each each of them specialize in different things, and you can pick from any one, so you can like mix and match yep. your abilities. So you might be like. I've got a whole bunch of like strength ones, which are like are just like a big hit or like a buff that like um, buffs your armor and and and, and things yep, like that. Yep, but yep. then you're like, I might need a heal over time, so you get something from the sort of like healing sure. healing thing, uh -huh. healing tree. So what? Let, let me ask you, what got you interested in this game? What? Why did it hit your? The wish thing list? that okay, so it was it was the um, the Baldur's Gate look. 
Okay. That got me really. I was like, <laughs> I was because I I was like, I'm keen on uh, like CRPGs. Yeah. Because so, after playing um, Pathfinder yep. and stuff, so I was like looking for a new one, and I, I saw this and was like, oh, this looks like it'd be pretty good. And then once it came out, I watched a few videos of it and found that it was like less of a CRPG and more of an action RPG, ARPG. ARPG. Yeah. But I still like the aesthetic and yeah. the combat is like. It's not it's not mindless. You yep. know how you can end up with like this mindless kind of yep, like yep, you yep, just yep, click yep, and clear, everything clear dies. Screen. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you can you, you have to look at the attack, you have to parry and Yeah, block. you have to watch and like dodge when they attack yeah. and parry and all that sort of stuff and like timing your abilities is like an important thing. And um like when you fight people, so you go from this overworld yep. where you're a pin and then you <laughs> <laughs> Why is that so funny to me? When you're a pen I don't know, map. especially I just can't. I can't deal with overworld as a pen anymore. <laughs> you're a pin. It's one game's so you're a pin. Okay. So picture, picture this game. You're a pin. That's it. That's the game. <laughs> you like it? Pretty good. Yeah. Are you All on? Right. Are you on anything? Are you on a, a map or are you just a pin? Yeah, you're holding a map up against a wall. Ah, oh, pretty cool. <laughs> so you can't I'm move. <laughs> are, are there other pens holding the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same map, oh, but up. they're all they're all quite far away. One in each corner. Hmm. All right, so uh, you. So are... yeah, you 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 when you're a pin, <laughs> yeah, you uh, collide with one of these other pins on the on the map, which yeah. is an enemy, or or an NPC, and you just you just talk to the NPC. They just give you some dialogue. Maybe they maybe they'll open up a shop that's for like a shop screen for you where sure. you can buy and sell stuff. But um, when it's the enemy, you just go into a different screen and you fight them. And then when, when you beat them, you go back to the overworld and you carry on. Uh, it's, I think the thing I really like about this is just, it's just simple. It's just nice, simple. You just I'm go curious. in there. I, I kind of want to check it out. Yeah. Uh, I, let me ask you, uh, with the, the combat sort of requiring more attention, does, mm. it, does it feel exhausting? Um, like okay, so let let, let me it put can, it on a spectrum because yeah. you've got on one end of the spectrum you've got your like brainless grind them up yeah, yeah. like Diablo or whatever, and then on the other end of the spectrum you've got like Dark Souls yeah or or uh, or Elden Ring where you you set yourself where like I have to be in a specific mood to play this mm. because it's I find it draining yeah it, where does it sit it's uh <laughs> it's not Dark Souls okay I've heard people describe it as it's got Dark Souls combat but really it's just <laughs> Timing. Well, I find this so interesting. Uh, the, <laughs> what the? That has become a. It has. A, a term for you can dodge and block. Yeah, I think which so. is <laughs> which predates Dark Souls yeah. by about thirty years. Any, yeah, it does feel like that. Like anything that's got anything that's like you don't just click a button and everything dies yeah. on screen. And anything where you have to time anything <laughs> seems to be like oh, it's got Dark Souls combat. Yeah. <laughs> um. But I have heard it described as it's got Dark Souls combat, which have is you, have not. Have you played Street Fighter Two? Is that got Dark Souls it's got combat? Dark Souls combat. Ah, yep. You can block and dodge, yeah. and then if you if you find the right moment, you can do an attack. It sounds yeah. like Dark Souls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It starts off uh, pretty like unforgiving, um, because okay. you you just start off with like very basic gear. Yeah. Uh, with no abilities. Um, like I died pretty quickly the first like hour i played yep um once i sort of got in the groove of it of like understanding lear learning the timing of things yep. and and that sort of stuff and how the game learning how the game wants me to sort of play i think yep. is 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 probably the way to to put it uh it became much easier and uh, and then the difficulty becomes the monsters you fight so uh, some of them you can roll in and yep. and quite easily clean the floor with them without really thinking too much others okay. you need much more precise timing because sure. they'll that they, they'll just they have different attacks they're just stronger they've quicker they yeah they've just got different abilities so right. you, you've you've got to think more and then you learn which monsters you can kind of i'll just blast through these and then which ones require some thinking gotcha. um and as you you know as you get better the ones that required a lot of thinking start to become a lot easier as you like get better gear and right, get, right, 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 you know right, right, right. um so you you feel your progression that way like there was early on i had a quest to like kill some uh big ogre or troll guys yep uh and the first time i fought one i was like i can't beat it it's impossible yep. 
And now I'm just like blasting through them and I'm like, oh, this is quite satisfying. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I know these guys. I know when to dodge. I know what their attacks are like. You know, there's uh, an idle game I've been playing. Not even actually, technically, I don't think it's an idle game. Yeah. There's a there's a genre of idle game and I kind of I have a real real love hate relationship with them. But there are idle games that don't work in the background. Yeah. So they're 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 basically idle in that you don't interact with them much, but they require that the app be open. Oh yeah. So uh, the game I'm talking about is called I think it's called Hero Quest, hmm. and uh, it has a similar sort of loop. You go to an area. There's monsters. There's a little bit of interaction with combat, but not much. Hmm. And uh, you get pushed into like higher level areas with much tougher monsters. Hmm. And like you can early on, you can grind rats, rats pretty reliably. But like the bullies that are the next step up are like hard. Hmm. And then eventually you're like you realize, oh, I can actually just grind out bullies. But the, yep. the the like thugs that are the next level up are, are Yeah, yeah. I can only kill one at a time. <laughs> so it's 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 definitely got that sense. Yeah. Like I I've since beating like but for a long time the trolls were the toughest thing I'd fought. And I was yep. like, I'm I'm pretty tough. I'm I'm dealing with everything now, like quite quite easily. I started progressing into a new area of the map. Yep. And fought some creatures that are just like, I don't know how the hell, like I need to use up all my health potions fighting them. Like it's, it's, right. it's crazy. Cause you haven't figured out. Ha- I haven't figured out their like their patterns yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, I, I, I think I have just been finding it like a nice, simple, like there's very, for, for all the lore that's in the game, there's very little story. Like, <laughs> it's, it, is it, it very freeform, or is it just that, yeah? Like uh, you, there's not like a, a strong thread to follow. There isn't really a strong th- thread to follow. Your first quest is just like defeat Alaloth, basically. Like pretty. Isn't much. isn't he the guy on the title of the? He game? is the guy on the title. He's their he's, Diablo. Is he the champion of the fort? No, he's their Diablo. He's like this demon lord that's ruining the world in some weird, way. Weird first quest to I mean look Zelda does it. Well I know that's what made me think of <laughs> Zelda. I, but that, and like you But in Zelda you are specifically like the immediately off yeah. that you're the chosen one. Well a- actually this is another thing I like. Basically. You're not the chosen one in this. Yeah that's why it's it's a particularly weird. It's I like, like that though. You you start off there's like a cutscene where the king says to you like okay you're one of these champions now you need to like uh that you, <laughs> you you're given a quest to to defeat Aloth but you're just one of many like you know like you're not you're not like zelda like the the chosen one that was like foretold imagine just going into like a a big like auditorium and going okay you're all champions now yeah. you all have to kill alaloth <laughs> yep and uh, i no, and no further little, direction yeah i do here's your quest here's, yeah. here's your quest and... <laughs> they're all the same. and uh, i don't you, I, I you don't... can't talk to me for more detail but you don't have to <laughs> I have about two paragraphs of it, though. <laughs> yeah, I've got two. I've got two paragraphs of uh, information for you, and that's it. I'll just repeat that over and over every yeah. time you talk to me. Um, yeah, I don't get why in this world it's like only these king anointed champions are on this quest to defeat Aloth. Like, why not have basically everyone? Yeah. be like, can anyone beat this guy, please? <laughs> yeah, especially it, like, it just feels very world. weird that that's the first thing he tells you to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, you're the champion. We also have this like crazy strong evil, by the way. Yeah. So, if you could just take it. Yeah. But I, I do like that it just um it just kinda throws you in it like that, where yeah. you give in the quest, okay, you need to defeat Aloth and like you when you actually look at the, the world map and have that quest active, there's a bunch of like um icons on high level dungeons. Uh huh. So it's sort of I sort of like Zelda, I guess you go through these high level dungeons and then eventually right. beat the 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 big bad guy yeah um but they're like way too strong for you right yep. so you basically you have to work your way up you, you have to work your way up so you sure. take on quests you 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 yeah just do things <laughs> is the king ever like why haven't you beaten Al- Aloth or he's or no he's always stoked like every because uh, I go through and like I as I like um defeat the dungeons in the f- this first kingdom I started in yeah I I triggered some some event where the king wanted to talk to me and he was like, man, you've been making good progress. Uh, here's, here's a bunch of loot. You're doing real well. Nice. You know? And I, I kind of like that. Like it, he, it keeps track of like what you've been doing and kind of like just rewards you as like the king would. If, if, if the king is sitting there and hearing, oh, this champion is, 
like cleaned up all these dungeons in the in the car in the kingdom that's been like spewing out get monsters fiefdom? all over the place. <laughs> Hope he gives you a fiefdom. That would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pathfinder. Yeah. You get, you like, get your own fiefdom. That's I, pretty cool. Yeah, I really did like that in Pathfinder. Um, there's also another cool thing in this game where uh, you have you have uh, you have three other NPCs from the other kingdoms who are on the same quest as you. They can uh, finish quests and defeat and like clear dungeons. So okay. you're in a race. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, interesting. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, but also imagine I can imagine that being really frustrating. That would give if me all no kinds of anxiety. Yeah, <laughs> if it's if it's outside of your control, you're going yeah. over this thing, and it's like, ah, well, I I waited one turn to yeah. Like what what happens yeah. if one of them kill Eloth before you? Like you go I through think all this thing? game over. Like oh, so uh, that feels so, like you win. So I say, right? well, yeah, <laughs> I, I say they're like NPCs because I've encountered them as NPCs. However, there is some sort of multiplayer aspect to it where those what those. NPCs, they're representing what other real real players are doing. But in my so you have game, to know life the game in order to like not be I locked don't know. out of well, content. When, when I chose this option, it's like there'll be there'll be three other players in your game, all like competing for the like that sounds the defeating. But um, also, that sounds like a nightmare. That sounds yeah. I, I, <laughs> I have I I, I want to read into this because I'm I'm very curious. Well, now how that's this the works. thing. I thought I thought there would be actual three other human players, yeah. and I would eventually find them. But I've found I've wandered into uh, those characters, and they're just they are just NPCs. Right. Okay. Um. There's a screen that shows like your achievements and all your uh, quests, uh, all your uh, dungeons that you've def- like completed. Yeah. Um. And uh, it also shows what the other um what the other heroes the other champions the dungeons they've completed sure. and so yeah i've i've completed a whole bunch in one kingdom and i see other dungeons completed in other kingdoms so, right so i'm like is that is that a human player or is that just like the npc doing it or something like i i don't very curious i don't know uh talking about how sort of loose the story is the the uh hero quest game i've been playing yeah it's it's very incomplete they're they're still working on it but um is it uh, early access I, technically it... i i think it it must be but it didn't <laughs> it didn't advertise itself as such but uh the story there is almost non-existent you you go and get your... <laughs> the game starts with you killing some rats and then your dad's like go get me some alcohol and then <laughs> while you go get the alcohol he dies oh my god <laughs> And then this guy's like, okay, well, this other guy's like, okay, well, well, I'll train you up to be a, a strong warrior. So go do these little quests. And you do those quests, he's like, great, now go get some magic. There's a there's a druid who lives in this forest. And you go to the druid, and he gives you a magic spell. And then at that point, there's no story. Hmm. And the it's just go, like, grind monsters. Yeah. The thing is, some of the monsters are questionable. Yeah. Okay, so you got you got your bullies and your thugs yeah. and your bandits and your pirates. But then you've got like farmers. Oh no. Like you go and you uh, just kill uh, farmers. Are you the bad guy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's like Are you just a bandit. <laughs> <laughs> You're really just a does... thug in someone else's yeah, game. It, yeah, does, yeah. it does really feel like <laughs> yeah. uh I feel like we've crossed a line here somewhere <laughs> along the way, and I don't know how to get back. Hmm. Uh Paul. You've been playing some idle games, or or at least you said mobile games. I yes. assume idle games. Uh one of them wasn't. One of them um so in my quest to find turn-based games, uh, I found this game called Rogue Adventure. Rogue Adventure, okay. Um, and it's just a card-based sort of roguelike where you go through these trees where you've... Uh, it's like a graph tree where you've got to pick a path and make your way through different enemies. Right, yep. Um, you'll start out with a deck that's super simple. And then you've kind of got to find a way to swap out cards for right. better ones, yep, yep, find yep. something to scale off. A bit, bit Slay the Spire-y. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which you can get on Android, but it wasn't free. So <laughs> Yeah, I've played, I played a, few, <laughs> a, a few knockoffs. Yeah. Um, I, I might actually end up buying it, in, uh, buying actual Slay the Spire, because this was really quite fun. And there is so much content in it. 
So you start out and there's one class unlocked. Uh-huh. Um, and then you can pick to play classic mode, of which there's normal difficulty and then Inferno 1 through 10. Okay. And then there's another game mode, uh, which is Hell, I think, which gets more difficult the further you get through it. And then there's Void mode, which randomizes half your deck. Oh. So you've got that, and you've got a you've got all those difficulties through each of those other yeah. game modes as well. And then you can go back, and there's actually like twelve classes wow. if you give them money. Yeah. And each of them has like a different mechanic that your base deck will scale off. Yeah. Cool. And it's I've played a lot of this game. Yeah. It's just a good one, like while you're watching TV or something, you go through I a few. Feel, this sounds very familiar. I wonder if I've also played this. I'm gonna really quickly look. <laughs> It also has the best paid feature ever where you give them money to not have to watch ads anymore, oh, yeah, uh-huh. but then you still get all of the ad benefits. Yep. Yep. Which is my favorite. It's like, that's, it's, it's like buying you, the game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you're trading money for, to not have to sacrifice time, yep. which is my favorite thing I, in like a yep. mobile game. I think yeah. that's great. I like that kind of thing. I've looked yeah. it up. Uh, I haven't played this, but I played one that's very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've I've never played Slay the Spire either. I've heard only good things. Yeah, so have I. Play it. Let's uh, is it is you said it's on Android? Yeah, I think it was like fifteen bucks or something though, and I wasn't sure if I was going to like this kind of game. Fifteen bucks, that's a yeah, lot for, it is uh, for a sixteen game. bucks. Wow. Yeah. You m- oh, that'll be. Yeah, you must really like it. <laughs> I might get it, and I think if you get it, that would be cool. We could all talk about it. All right. like, it's it. not early access, but <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I'll get it. I'll get it. I could definitely I give a... it a go because I feel like I've gotten about as much as I'm going to out of yep. Rogue Adventure. Yeah. Slay, There's so Slay many. Moments. Is basically like a super polished version of that mm. sort of archetype, I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it... I, I got a load of other games that you um, recommended, a load of idle games, and I tried them. Okay, what did you try? Um, <laughs> did you, did you try was, it? This was a while ago. Did the island? The main one, yeah. I, I re I remember an island one. I I actually tried that one as well. Yeah, yeah. What What did you think? <laughs> I wasn't a fan. Yeah. Um, but it's got the the main thing going on in it is progress, and I need mm. a game that has a little bit more strategy for me to want right. to keep yes. going. Mm-hmm. Yes. Just progression on yeah. its own isn't enough. Because yep. if it was, I'd play all of the idle games. There, there is strategy in there, but it is so the the, the biggest problem with Infinity Island is it usability, uh, because the strategy is buried in a way that and and okay, so you, you're you're getting these like pet things, right? Yep. And these pets have passive effects. Yep. And some of the passive effects you can create a build theoretically. So like, uh, I have three pets that combined make the cooldown for like shooting my grappling hook basically nothing okay so i could just shoot my grappling hook non-stop uh, yeah which is insane but you have to get all three pets you have to like upgrade some of them to like their excel versions or whatever like their their bonus versions yeah and you also have to have all three at the same time for this to work and you have like these favorite pet slots so mm. you can do this you can just force all three pets to be active all the time yep but you also then have to know which pets they are, and that means you have to shift sift through this like menu of unlabeled pet art, knowing which one <laughs> you're looking for. There's no way to look up what their effects are. There's no way to see what their effects are until you've selected them. There's a cooldown if you select the wrong one. You have to wait like 10 minutes or whatever until you can reselect mm-hmm. yeah. the pet. So it's just like a ton of usability issues. That game definitely felt like it suffered from some usability things. It's, There's menu, menus within menus oh, within so menus many in some places. Menus, yes. And uh, I, that's the the worst part of that game, for sure. And you were quite right that it is not a lot of strategy. There's a little bit, like I said, uh, but it's it's a busy, like, work game. It's, it's, yeah. it's a game where there's always something you can be doing. Hmm. Uh, and that's why it's, like, pleasant for me. It's just, you know, the baby's gone to I, bed. I definitely see the appeal of Parks and Rec on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on the TV yeah. and I just need to veg out for a little bit so I collect items or I upgrade some pets or I do the science research which I don't think is on there yet Spoilers. probably not science research thing as well <laughs> uh, 
yeah, what else did you guys download? I think that was it. No, that I played that one and that Shin Megami Tensei game, yeah. and then a lot of Rogue Adventure. Nice. Mm. Blake, you said you tried some other idle games? Um, or was this ages ago? This was ages ago. Uh, I don't remember all of them that you sent, but I do remember the um, the island one, which I was the only one that I played maybe in, I don't know. How long ago was this? This was months ago, Okay, man. that was a different this game. Was month- <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, this was months ago. I think a, a Tap Island, I think, is the one. Tap Island, yeah, that probably... Yeah, that, was I, that was like, a, it was kind of, it had some survival game yeah, yeah. aspects to it. The, the thing with idle games is that I just, I, I get to a point where I just think, what am I doing? Of course. Yeah, but I think I get to that point quicker than you do. Yes. Much quicker. Yeah, I, I think that's true of most people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For whatever reason, idle games have a stickiness for me. Mm. Uh, what is that? Do you think is is it just? It's. I think it's. It's. Uh, I think part of it is I. I want to know what's next. Mm. Some there are some great idle games out there where they more things take... to tap on is what's next probably. Well, <laughs> you, you say things. that, but but there are some that like take real interesting weird turns. Mm. So like, there's one that I've been playing no joke for like two years. Yeah. Uh, called uh idle slayer right and uh it starts off as sort of like an infinite runner kind of thing your characters are always running towards the right Mm. there's coins to collect and monsters that are automatically killed as you run through them uh and there's this big like passive tree kind of thing and at some point you unlock like this like bonus level mode which turns it like there's some jump puzzles that Mm. start showing up and uh then you unlock like a town with quests. Oh my god! And oh, like, what? Uh, and then there's like this whole crafting system. <laughs> and then you unlock. Uh, I recently unlocked a boss fight. Oh my god! And it's just like there's. It's just it takes weird gameplay twists. Yeah, and, yep. and I find that interesting. It's like what is. But you you don't know that those are coming when you no, start. No, that's right? exactly so right. Y- you you there's you there's an element of faith there. Where yeah, like the the creator ideally has a vision here, and mm. they have this the idea to like make things different so you just you start one of these games just hoping that <laughs> that it's so, not just ads that so, it's not yeah. <laughs> yeah so there's have you ever there's a i think there's an idle game called uh a dark room yep have you played that yes that's a that's a really good example of a game that yeah takes weird twists and turns yeah and yeah. It, it starts off basically like a clicker mm. and then it, it turns into like there's a, a map world map where you can navigate and this yeah. combat and the combat has depth to it mm. Uh, and that's sort of that's the dream, right? Is yep. you you discover this game that starts off one way and evolves, mm. and goes in different directions. Uh, and there are a few of those. And, yeah. uh, uh they're few and far between. Yeah, yeah. But they exist, and I what, like. What's the them. ratio? Do you think of? Um... Oh God, there's a lot of bad idle games. <laughs> out there. Uh, a lot of I, idle games I, that I've probably just... played most. Of them. <laughs> um, there's one called Exponential Idle that I sort of started fiddling around with. Yeah. That has like, it starts off. I there's a. There's a lot to it I haven't yet discovered. Mm. Uh, it seems like you are uh, a math PhD playing around with uh, just uh, formulas, and and but there's like now story as well, and the story okay. seems to progress over time. <laughs> and uh, then there's like mini games, mm. like slide puzzles, and weird slide puzzles where uh, you know your your typical slide puzzle. Where you sort of you, you gotta move around the square, yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah. It's like it's like nine sort of exactly. Yeah. They have a, a version of that where when you slide something to the one direction, the thing at the end pops out the other side. Oh, oh! And you have to arrange. It's like basically nine numbers, and you have yeah. to arrange them from one to nine. But you have to sort of manage this the fact that it, it functions as a, as a torus, so it's it's always like if you move from one side to the other, it pops. Yeah, the other side, uh, and it's it's a hard puzzle. Hmm. And they've got different Dude, variants. That sounds of that. fun. Yeah. So there's like that sounds like a fun game on its own. <laughs> yeah. And, but this is buried inside of an idol game. Yeah. So there's like I like that there's hmm. these little things to just uncover. Yeah. Yeah. There was a um not quite an idol game, but a casual game that I used to play uh ages ago called Tank Hero. Yeah. And you kind of just go through rooms. There'll be different kinds of enemies, and you could sort of upgrade your weapons. Um, it was very much like you'd be gated by needing to go back and upgrade things after doing a bunch of runs. Right. And then 
in one update, they just added an entire other island with a bunch of different sort of puzzles and stuff on it. Yeah. And then there was some mining thing where they all of a sudden introduced some idol thing. And they just kept chucking stuff in the game. Yeah. It was interesting for a while, but I think in the end, they went too far with yes. the having too many ideas. Yeah. And the main game that I'd enjoyed in the first place had gone away a little bit. Right. It also yeah. got super, super grindy. Mm. Right. That it's... point of where you could upgrade to get to the next thing, you would have to combine lower level things. Yeah. So by the time you got to near the end of the game, you needed like thousands and thousands <laughs> of, of the these little drops. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that often is the case. Idle games that are persistently worked on tend to collapse under the weight of their content. Yeah. Uh, and that's always the tricky thing to balance. And then the, the other end of that spectrum, of course, is like developers uh, developing exclusively for the high end players. Where yeah. like it's always the stretch goals or whatever. Mm. It's the yeah. things that like you have to be 10,000 hours in to see this content. Yep. Or whatever. And then it's, yeah, you, a new player is no. never going to reach that or, you know, you know, it's, yeah. So there's, there's a balance to be struck there. Have you ever uh, thought of if you made an idle game? what it would be not not in great detail really because <laughs> i worry that's a trap <laughs> uh i worry that could be a bottomless pit mm. of ideas yeah uh what but i did i i doubt i did want to mention frog fractions yeah i've been thinking of that yeah. during this conversation did you know they made a sequel yeah it's hidden in some sort of fairy game yep. right yes. yeah. we may have talked about this in the past i think we i think we did but i don't know what the game is paul have you played frog fractions i have not but i have seen someone play it on youtube or something uh, yeah yeah which was amazing because i had no idea what it was <laughs> yeah, and... the... yes it's a game that is best discovered uh yeah. going in blind uh yeah that's all I, I wanted to i should i should track down frog fractions too at some point um we're, we're pretty close to out of time we've got some questions i thought i might Read them out. Yep. Uh, this is from Mark. Says he. He says Blake. Why? <laughs> hey, uh, did you all watch uh, SGDQ twenty two last week? It was great. If you haven't, I recommend watching at least the Kirby Tilt and Tumble Run. Hmm. I missed that, and I'm bummed because I like usually will make a point of making sure that there's at least some of the platformers I get to watch. Yeah. And I just had no idea it was coming. Right. Completely missed it. I I do love a good speed run. There is that's a, just fun. Yeah. I do you like the ones that are do you, okay, here's a question. Do you prefer speedruns that are uh skill based or or like bug based? Skill based. Like the Mario ones are kind of my favorite. Interesting. Where you see people just that are just the best at Mario. Yeah. There's uh I think I might be on the other side of that. Like I cuz I look, I appreciate the skill. Yeah. The skills are really impressive. Um but there was one a friend of mine showed me years ago. It was a Zelda speed run where it was to get all of the medallions uh, for Ocarina of Time. It's like these six medallions you have to collect. Yep. And uh, that it, the speed run was about an hour and a half. And it w did all these crazy bugs. And what I loved about it was the exposing of like how the game systems work behind the scenes. Yep. Uh, and some of the like tricks they used to find wall clips and reproduce them consistently where like it's like okay i do two side rolls and then two back flips and then i take three <laughs> steps forward and then i have to press my nose against this wall and then uh yeah i do double I back do flip like those forward two, attack two, and i go yeah. through the wall and it's like what <laughs> yeah some of those just get absurd though like do you watch any of the test bot ones where the bot does optimally exactly yeah. what you need to do yeah and everything just gets crazy <laughs> there's uh a, one of my favorite taz bots it's not technically a speed run, but it's like uh these people. I I love these people who create their own challenges. Yeah, games and there's one, uh, a guy who dedicates his like, I guess, free time to playing Super Mario sixty four through yeah. speed through Taz like Taz bots basically. Yeah. Uh. Uh, and his whole thing is beat the game in as few A presses as possible, <laughs> and A is jump. <laughs> so it's it's a Mario game with as as little jumping as possible. Oh, that's kind of amazing. And uh, he there's like a half hour video uh, about beating a, a level with uh, 
I think one and a half A presses, and and it. <laughs> you, now you're thinking, what the heck is a, a half A press? And that most of the video is him explaining <laughs> what a half how, a. how what, a, what a half A press is and how it works, and it's uh fantastic. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make you guys watch it. Cool. Yep. All right. Uh, so to answer your question, Mark, no, I don't think anybody watched it, but we do love speed runs. Uh, if you've got a good speed run. Uh, Mark, you should email frontseatquestions at gmail.com again and send us your... F- oh, it was Kirby Tilt and Tumble was the one that we should watch, right? Send us a link. We'll post it on our Facebook page, maybe? Yeah, that would be a good idea. I'll watch it for sure. Yeah, yeah. Kirby That's a great idea. Fun. Cool. Uh, I think we're pretty much out of time. Yep. So we'll be back ideally in a couple weeks unless uh, Blake's family keeps I have no more family. It's fine. <laughs> you've, you've killed your family? <laughs> I've, run, I've run out of family. Okay. Uh, Blake's family is no more. <laughs> uh, we finally eliminated them. Yep. Now it's just you and me, Nick. <laughs> uh, do we have to fight to the death? <laughs> yep. Uh, sorry. Uh, great. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. Th- I always knew this was coming. <laughs> yeah, I think we both knew when yeah. we started this podcast. That's <laughs> this how it would end. Only one way this can end. Uh, thanks, guys. We'll be back uh, in a couple weeks, hopefully. Email frontseatquestions at gmail Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. 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 Yes. Bye! I cannot believe how much I struggled to uh, explain <laughs> yeah, the you, game. You, you lost <laughs> the front thread very early I, there. Real quick. I, uh, I think um, it was from drinking last night. Oh, uh, over? Yeah. Oh, it's your birthday. How's yeah, your birthday? Yeah. Oh, Thanks. happy birthday. I didn't know it was your birthday. You told me that you'd been drinking. You didn't tell me that it was actually been... Yeah, he's, this is a little worm. <laughs> little worm. <laughs> I'll crush you. No, but, uh, little birthday worm. <laughs> <laughs> you little birthday worm. Uh, you, you didn't tell anybody.